Hey everybody, welcome to another Off the Shelf Board Game Review. This week we're looking at Evil High Priest from Peterson Games. Now it's a two to five player worker placement game set in the Cthulhu Mythos universe from Peterson Games. Now before you go running screaming in the night like you just saw Shoggoth, stay around just for a second because this may be a game that interests you. But before we go anywhere, I do need to let you know that this is 100% a print and play copy of the game. I'm not paid by Peterson Games. I don't work for Peterson Games. As a matter of fact, I had to download all this and print this all out myself just to check out the game. So there are a few things missing from this print and play version of the game. I'll cover those in a minute, but let's just go over exactly what exactly Evil High Priest is. Now, Evil High Priest is a worker placement game where the players are, well, you guessed it, we're all Evil High Priests. We're actually all cultists. We're all trying to bring about one of the great old ones or bring him back into the world. And the way we're going to do this is by gathering resources. Now, we've all seen this in worker placement games before where we're going to basically take our units we're going to go ahead and move locations. We're going to grab a couple resources. We're going to keep doing that ad nauseum until we get our victory points. We're going to figure out who the grand winner of the game is. But Evil High Priest does it a little bit differently. And this is actually what's kind of interesting about the game. You see, in your usual worker placement games, basically you put your units out there. You grab your resources. Everybody keeps taking advantage of all these locations. We grab our resources. Once we get all our resources, we're going to cash in those resources for victory points. This is where this game diverts because your resources are your victory points which means every single decision you make in the game is a little bit more agonizing because not only are your resources and i mean all your resources potential victory points you spend them you're spending your victory points you gain them you're gaining your victory points so watch what you're doing there right there but not only are they all your victory points you need to protect these victory points because you need to build up your asylum and your sanctum and all these different locations where you're going to be hiding all these resources because eventually, as you go through and start breaking out these Elder Signs that remove them from the board and free the Great Old One, as you're doing all this work, gathering all these resources, and yes, even these Elder Signs are victory points and resources you must protect, but you have to protect all these resources, because eventually, some investigators are going to come raid your sanctum. They're going to possibly steal your resources if you didn't protect them, if you didn't build up your resources in a very good way. So you almost have a worker placement game where your resource, resources are your victory points, but you must protect them almost like a tower defense style game. Now adding on to the variety of the game is a couple of really cool, interesting and neat concepts. First of all, you have the rituals board that isn't even going to open up a couple of extra locations until the first investigator raid happens. And not only that, as you're breaking out all these elder signs, and again, there's only 13 of them, each one was worth 10 victory points. So you see your victory points limited right there. But as soon as that last elder sign is broken, the game ends immediately and everybody's going to count out their victory points. Nobody gets any extra free turns at that point. You're basically going to get that last elder sign and get that final victory point. But not only that, as you're opening up all these locations, you're also opening up extra locations on the board for players to gain access and gain extra resources and extra locations. Adding on to that, that there's multiple different cult boards that represent each one of the great old ones. Every one of them adds different gameplay, different variety, different resources, and different ways to play the game making sure that every time you play the game of Evil High Priest is going to play a lot differently. The Cthulhu board plays differently from the Black Goat, and if you have access to the full game, there's more boards than that. But if you check out the downloadable PDF for the print and play, you get to check out the Cthulhu board and the Black Goat board, and I've seen just from those two boards how differently the game plays, plus there's about five or six extra boards that are going to make the game play differently every single time you play the game. So you have the variety of the different cult boards, you have a different variety of the extra locations that are going to open up as the game plays, adding different locations where you're going to actually lock in your cultists because they're going to be stuck there for a little bit while. You also have your special board that can only be used by your evil high priest. You have your regular acolytes who can go out to the town, go out to the ritual boards, and even go out to these different cult boards, meaning that this game has a lot of variety and a lot of different aspects that make it just different from your average worker placement game. Now, if you want to learn how to play Evil High Priest, I'm going to give you a quick overview of how to play the game. Now, unfortunately, like I've mentioned already, since this is a print and play, there are a couple different things that I'm actually missing here that are going to be available in the full game. First of all, I don't have the special investigators, which are going to change the way the game plays every single time it plays the game, because it's going to make the raids play out differently. I also don't have access to the special priests that the players are going to gain access to every time they play the game, meaning that every single player is going to play a little bit more asymmetric because your special priest is a special spot that only you can use, and you can only use it once per game. Barring different things are going to pop in the game, but it's going to make the game play a little bit more asymmetric. Plus, there's a couple other things that I'm missing, like the special different monsters, extra different chambers to protect your room. But basically, I'm going to give you a quick way to how to play the game, show you some sample gameplay in a separate video, and finally, I'm going to go and give you my final thoughts on Evil High Priest. Now, if you enjoy this video and you enjoy this video series, click that like button, click that subscribe button, and as always, thanks for watching.